it exists for a more idealized version of the current time and civilization that we live in. Maybe I should just do that caveman speak, right? That's the best way to put it, yeah. Casey doesn't like politicians, lie to people, mislead for sake of power, not betterment of others in civilization, ugh. I'm just saying, the nature of media is everybody's looking for something to make their lives better or for someone to lead them. That doesn't really exist anymore. What exists is you. What's up, people? I thought today it would be fun to review the entirety of the Omega car. This car is a fascinating topic uh, on my channel that I have highlighted in a number of ways this year, but I really haven't done a deep dive into what it's all about, where it came from, what goes into it, uh, and where it's going. Well, I built it because the world ticked me off and politicians lied to us. <laughs> Whoa, that's something that's never happened before, right? Well, the Omega car, as I'll typically say, it's something, this is the white car right here, by the way, for all you new people, something that is representative of more sustainably recycle manufacturing concepts that would be vastly more efficient for transportation in the world for the sake of people and the environment. Think about the words I just said, dissect them, <laughs> okay? That should tell you a lot. Now, I noticed I said car, I didn't say drivetrain. The drivetrain's not as important. The way we actually construct what a car is, what it means and how we use it, and what we do with it from beginning to end and its impact is everything. So, a car built similarly to the Omega car can represent different usages different configurations, and it can utilize different power plants or drivetrains, whether that's electric, gasoline, diesel, hybrid, natural gas, nuclear, doesn't matter, steam powered. It can be any motive force because drivetrains and power plants will continue to evolve. But it's how we as people look at the actuality of the automobile and how we move around that matters. So what I created with this is a car for an idealized version of the world and time that we live in right now. Dissect the words that I just said, <laughs> okay? Take them at value. The car can't really exist in the world with which we live in right now. I'll come back to that. Now I know there's gonna be a bunch of dumb trolls right now that are saying stupid things to try to get us off topic. So how about you guys just don't do that right now? Okay. This car I originally came up with the idea for back in somewhere around 2011 was when I started getting more serious about building it. But it was 2008 that I got ticked off. And I'll be honest, and this video is in no way a political leaning whatsoever relating to any political affiliation. So while I'm sure you guys can figure out the people and the parties of those who associated that ticked me off, I'm telling you, this in no way is a statement relating to any of that, so can we please keep it out of it? But in 2008 in the United States, we had a presidential election. And there was somebody that said that they were going to help Detroit retool for the sake of tomorrow and the future, for the betterment of the world, blah, blah, blah. It was just a bunch of BS. And it was frustrating to me because it was obvious to me what a bunch of horse crap that was and it would never happen. And then of course the uh, 2008 financial downturn came based upon greed and housing markets and a lot of other things. <laughs> and we had to bail out the automotive industries. So the people, our money went into helping the automotive industries because they are too big to fail. Too big to fail meaning they were too entrenched with the nature of our economics as society and it would be too horrible to see it change or fall down because we can't possibly grow it up as something. We're stuck with what we got. This is the way it is. We're gonna go down on this ship no matter what. <laughs> Um, and that's what happened. But that was our opportunity to take things in a more positive direction, or even a little bit. But guess what? We didn't. Whoa, newsflash, go figure. And I know I'm sounding a little smart, snarky and negative, but come on. Um, so I would be driving around or riding around on my motorcycle, looking at all these new car dealerships, 
after that and seeing how suddenly we're basically rebooting muscle cars from the 50s and 60s and we're building giant trucks and SUVs and everything I saw about what we were doing after that time had no future, no long-term future. And we doubled down on the nature of the economics and the, what we've done in the past for short-term gain, but we did nothing for long-term gain. Why don't we just build cars intelligently for the sake of people in the world that people who can, can actually afford that don't screw up the environment? <laughs> well, because it's way better if we use tons of steel and oil and build, build, build. So it ticked me off. And as an individual who thinks for myself and is also an artist and an engineer type and fabricator, I'm like, huh, if I just look at the nature of how the world works and people are and think about what would be better for everybody right now, uh, it's not that hard to come up with something. So I decided to just build it. Um, and I guess I'm having a little bit of an attitude right now, so thank you for looking past this. Um, but how do you not? So I built the Omega car. Now I'm gonna tell you something. I am not going to tell you all the materials that are involved with it. And I'm not gonna tell you how to produce all of the nature of the IP that exists in my head. And I'm also not that worried about those people out there that are like conspiracy theorists and such and, and talking about the nature of bookshelving in the past where somebody designs a carburetor or a car that's cheap and gets huge miles a gallon and they get knocked off or they get bought off and they live on an island somewhere. I don't really, I'm not really that worried about it because the world has evolved to a point right now where nobody gives a crap about this <laughs> and the internet can just suppress it if they don't want it anyway. And also, I'm not gonna build more because we can't. <laughs> we are so deeply entrenched in the nature of how our society and economics and industry works from the top down all throughout, it's not gonna change. It does not matter. I can hand you transportation on a golden platter, the proverbial golden platter for the betterment of everybody. You know, I could design you magical cold fusion and give you a teeny tiny reactor that nobody could actually circumvent to make some sort of uh, <laughs> device of destruction uh, that would power the world. I could cure cancer and all of those things would be squelched because they screw up the things with money and power. So, like, I know this is defeatist attitude sounding because I recently had a guy from a uh, hedge fund of private equity start asking me about it, of course IP, and I'm like, let's just cut through the first date <laughs> and go right to the point. Um, and I told him the ways you could do things with it that would actually matter to society and be acceptable and ways you could create a movement, a social movement and make something bigger and all. And then I told him, and, and I said, uh, but the problem is the people that want to invest in those things they're just the idiots that want an immediate return and just crunch the numbers and do all that. And that's not going to work. It's not going to work. The, the difficulty, I'm just, kind of, I'm just going to the bigger level stuff. The difficulty with doing something like that for the world is it requires somebody with enough financial horsepower that isn't necessarily worried on a direct return. You know, not the typical hedge fund or PE guys that just want that for the sake of money and not worried about civilization. And let's face it, I don't know any political figures that are actually powerful enough to do anything real. <laughs> they're, they're not. It's, you, you, you can't much change it. You're, you're better off waiting for society to entirely collapse and build it up back up from the ground up. I'm sorry, but it's true. Like, I know a lot of people wondered about it, what I'm gonna do with it, but the fact of the matter is I'm not really gonna do anything with it. Like, I have, it sat in my garage for years and I didn't bother finishing it because I knew I wouldn't have a voice and nobody would know it. And then I just decided to, to bring it to the shop and have it sit in the Genius Garage Design Studio because maybe it could at least inspire some kids for betterment of de design. I'm not joke, no joking. So I could help teach them how to, to draw and such. It's, it's like I said to you at the beginning of this video, it exists for a more idealized version of the current time and civilization that we live in. Meaning, it's freaking great for everybody. Cheaper, lower environmental impact works, but it's not gonna work at that level because our world is too jacked up. <laughs> Plain and simple. But I built it, and it's cool, and it's fast, and gets good miles like Matt Callan. If I, if I electrified it and made it electric powered, the range would be astronomical, the performance would be great. Oh, it would also be safer. <laughs> Like, yeah, it's better across the board, but you can't much do with it. And there's probably gonna be about 50 people in Silicon Valley right now and about four production companies that are like, oh, we gotta skid our fingers in this because this guy's just an idiot in Ohio. Duh. 
just go away. Like, it's not going to change anything. I'm so tired of people like PE people and hedge fund guys and people in Silicon Valley, like just the idiot underlings that want to try to find something new so they can social climb to a position of power and money and bookshelf IP. Just go away. Like, I love this. I was going to tell you more about the car, but I kind of just wanted to be real. This is super real. And for all the new people that are coming to my channel right now about this, if you don't like the version of the video I'm giving you right now, just watch any of my other hundreds of ones. I've got ones that are total cotton candy and are just fun with building. I've got ones that are serious. So you can find what you want. <laughs> I just, like, when I created this channel, like a year and a half ago, I said to myself, you know, I can outbuild about anybody, but I can't outfinance them. Um, so the one thing I can do better than anybody else is just be myself and be honest. So that's what I'm going to do. So anyway, the Omega car, yeah, there it is. It's, it's basically just going to sit there and I'll get it out sometime when I feel like it. And if I, it, it's like a guitar. I used to play the guitar in high school. I have no reason to play the guitar. I'd like to. I kind of forgot I even did that until my mother-in-law goes, wow, I didn't know you played the guitar. And I'm like, ah. And then I picked it up and I forgot I enjoyed it. And the Omega car will probably be exactly the same thing. It'll sit around and look pretty and I'll tell people of what it could be, but it can't be. And uh, once in a while I'll be like, huh, maybe I should take that out. I'm like, oh, it got 80 miles to the gallon. Eh, maybe tomorrow I'll try for 110. And it doesn't matter. Nobody reports on this. <laughs> Like, come on. The only reason anybody reported on this earlier this summer is because I did big natty fat burnouts and left 11s for days on the parking lot with it. That's the only reason. The reason, I'll tell you this, the reason I built it into a two-seat sports car is because I knew that society was innately shallow as all heck. And they don't care how impressive something is, how life-changing for the betterment of others, how great it is, what, what the eye, they don't care about all, any of the things that mean anything. They're like, ooh, sports car, look cool. <laughs> they want their inner caveman to be excited. So, um... I guess I'm killing your inner caveman, um, and I'm just being super real. So for all the people that are like, but Casey, you have to try to change to make the world better. I've done that, and I'm telling you all about it, and that's the best thing I can. But Casey, somebody from big oil or the auto industry is going to bump you off. No, they're not, <laughs> because I'm clearly not trying to do anything. And there's enough people out there talking crap about them already, and they know that we're stuck with them. Like they care about me or that. <laughs> Doesn't like, oh, Casey, somebody's going to kind of come in and take your IP. And that, what if somebody wanted to invest in it and make money? <laughs> they just want money. And they're just going to rag me out or anybody else and destroy it to do it, not do anything with it or bookshelf it. So that's no good. <laughs> so why do I care? Um, so I'm just going to sit here and make my Snow Army YouTube video and just talk honestly about it. I didn't really have an end for this video, so I'm going to make one right now. I was going to just tell you about it and, and like go through the whole thing. Look, Omega Car, ooh, ooh, politician, make Casey mad. Casey go out, see problems with world, decide he can do better. Build car to showcase how you could do better. Casey realized world doesn't care. So Casey put car away for years. And then Casey decided, uh, maybe I should at least teach students with, with it. Give opportunity. Casey, do something positive, even though world doesn't care. And then, so here we are, right? Like, that's what it is. And then here I am making a video of it. Casey must make video. YouTube algorithm favors more things going out. C people wonder what white car is. White car look cool. White car be better for future. Some people realize most people don't care. Not good angle for media. Maybe someday media will care. <laughs> okay, so maybe when we have an, like, a finan or like an oil crisis breakdown, it'll work. The other reason, well, the problem with the Omega car right now is... Our society is infatuated with uh, autonomous cars, which I hate. Uh, and I'll tell you why I hate, because now I know you all got triggered and you think I hate it for different reasons. Um, the self-driving car doesn't help us right now at all. It's just a way to flex or create more power upon people. It's nothing more than an offshoot of the kind of jacked up economy and industrialist world that we lived in right now. And people are getting all triggered right now. Whatever, it's true. Uh, it's not really necessarily for the betterment of mankind. I'll tell you why. People are like, oh, Casey, you can't say that. Autonomous cars, if they were perfect, then there wouldn't be collisions. And you could get schnockered and just sit in your car and it would drive you around and you could do business and talk and, do okay. All that maybe could be true. But 
what are you all doing with society in the world? You're not creating any awesome art. You're not exploring space. You're not doing anything for the better of the environment or the world or animals or finding a more harmonious life on planet Earth. So what do you think self-driving cars are going to be? They're just going to be a way to flex power upon people. So pfft, I'm not into that. I'm more into creating something that's better for right now as is. So here I am, just another kook in a barn with a giant flying pterosaur above me, because that's normal, that uh, likes to help launch careers with kids in engineering because I'm a nice guy, <sighs> and uh, build a car that matters that people will wonder about. So I wanted to make a video, and I'm just going to be super honest about it, because this is the conversation I would have with anybody normal people. There you go, full honesty. Casey, honest, tell truth, make things happen, sleep better at night, don't care what people think. <laughs> Actually, I kind of do care what people think, only for the sake of it drives me nuts when society goes the wrong direction. Um, yeah, so maybe I should just do that, caveman speak, right? That's the best way to put it, yeah. Casey doesn't like politicians, lie to people, mislead for sake of power, not betterment of others in civilization. Ugh. <laughs> Whatever. Casey, go out, make world a better place on his own. Actually, that's it, guys. That's the theme for today. There's so many things out there, we all look toward media, the television, internet, social media, the radio. If you're old, I know you guys aren't listening to the radio or don't care, and you just wanna hear your crunchy tunes, okay? And like Pandora is better, I get it. But I'm just saying, the nature of media is everybody's looking for something to make their lives better, or for someone to lead them. That doesn't really exist anymore. What exists is you, and what you think, and what you can do. And that's the most powerful thing at the end, is how we lead our lives and the examples we set for the betterment of tomorrow. So stop grumbling about what you see other people are doing and just lead your life better. Don't be a jerk. I mean, the entire political correct movement over the last 30 years can be summed up with, don't be an asshole. That's it. So the Omega car was something that I knew I could do to set an example to be better. I don't actually expect that it'll change the world, but I do hope it at least inspire you all to realize where we're at, where you're at, and that some people care enough to do something. Because that car is of no financial gain to me. It takes up space. It doesn't really matter. But the more important thing is, I got to do it. I got to see that it's possible. And you get to see that it's possible. And maybe together you and I and others will be able to make the world a better place. That's the lesson. That's the purpose of the Genius Garage. And that's the purpose of the Omega Car. And frankly, the purpose of about everything I do. I hope you will adopt similar philosophies. See you guys next time.